These films went from terrific to terrible faster than you can say Phantom Menace. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie franchises that were ruined by terrible endings. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at franchises that started out strong, but eventually dipped in quality and ultimately left audiences on the worst note possible. Number 10, The Godfather Part 3, The Godfather Franchise. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. This is one of those sequels that's hard to get a grasp on, as it has the rare distinction of receiving a Best Picture Oscar nomination and multiple Razzies. To be fair, Godfather 3 isn't without some impressive production values and an occasional poignant moment. When stacked up against its two near-perfect predecessors, though, it's not hard to view this final chapter as the black sheep of the trilogy. You know, you haven't kissed me hello yet. Relatives always kiss. <laughs> oh no, we're related. Sofia Coppola's infamously panned performance aside, the film feels like an uneven and unnecessary epilogue. Director Francis Ford Coppola actually admitted that his first two films summed up the Corleone saga, but he was motivated to make this third film primarily due to financial desperation. It shows. You've desecrated a classic film. This is worse than Godfather 3. Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa. Let's not say things we can't take back. Number 9, Little Fockers, the Meet the Parents franchise. So I ask you, Greg, are you prepared to be the Godfucker? The premise wasn't especially original, but Meet the Parents took audiences by surprise thanks to its winning cast and quotable one-liners. Meet the Fockers, while not as critically well-received, at least offered a few new elements and solid laughs. That's more than we can say about Little Fockers, which came out six years later. You're up to something and I'm watching you. Well, guess what? I have eyes too, so I'll be watching you, watching me. We'd say that the film was too little too late, but the sequel wasn't even a little funny, relying on lazy jokes with actors who all seemed tired of the franchise. Robert De Niro even made fun of the film while accepting the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award. How did he go from Godfather to Godfucker? I was very, very moved and gratified when you made the announcement two months ago, well before you had a chance to review Little Fockers. <laughs> Number 8, Robocop 3, the Robocop franchise. Dead or alive, you are coming with me. There's no denying that 1987's Robocop is an action classic, complete with bloody violence, memorable characters, and clever satire. Robocop 2 might have left audiences unsatisfied, but it came much closer to capturing the original spirit than Robocop 3. You I must commandeer your vehicle for police use. This sequel essentially subtracted everything fans loved about the franchise, with no Peter Weller, no interesting commentary, and no hard R rating. Compared to the first film, this feels like a neutered, family-friendly cartoon. Heck, the actual Robocop animated series had more dignity than this snooze fest. Put down your weapons. You are under arrest. While subsequent attempts to rejuvenate the franchise delivered mixed results at best, we can take solace in knowing that nothing will ever be worse than the original trilogy's ending. Hopefully. Don't count on it, chum. Number 7, A Good Day to Die Hard, The Die Hard Franchise. You're not gonna die today! While the original Die Hard is widely considered the best in the series, the following three sequels all delivered something worthwhile. The second film had several insane set pieces, the third film offered a refreshing change of pace, and the fourth film was a lot of fun, even with a PG-13 rating. A Good Day to Die Hard just feels phoned in, however, with generic action sequences, forgettable villains, and a stunted runtime of only 97 minutes. Are you crazy? Yeah, a little bit. It's truly disheartening to watch the definitive action movie franchise implode into a pale imitation of itself that solely relies on cheap cliches. A more fitting title would have been Old Habits Die Hard. You need a hug? Number 6, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, The Superman Franchise. Stop! Don't do it! The people! Superman isn't just one of the most iconic superheroes ever, but he's also one of the most important. The filmmakers exemplified why in Man of Steel's first two cinematic outings, but they missed the mark with Superman 3. Yeah, I've been thinking that I'm not making enough money for this gig. We'd gladly take more of Richard Pryor's failed comedy bits, however, then watch Superman 4, a film that sadly can't be wiped from our memories with a kiss. Featuring a story that makes zero sense, embarrassing performances, and special effects that were abysmal, even by 1987 standards, 
It's not surprising that Bryan Singer decided to ignore the film's events when he made Superman Returns. Alas, it remains an unfortunate ending to Christopher Reeves' tenor as Superman. No, uh, no pain, no gain? Number 5. Spider-Man 3 – The Spider-Man Franchise Stings, doesn't it? From one superhero franchise to another, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man helped return comic book movies to their former glory, and its follow-up set a new gold standard for the genre. Then Spider-Man 3 came along, and the franchise came crashing down the water spout. Like the aforementioned Superman films, this sequel relied far too heavily on campy humor, giving us a dancing emo Peter Parker who was laughable in all the wrong ways. <laughs> It additionally packed in too many villains and side characters, none of whom are done the justice their comic book counterparts deserved. Despite being a box office hit, Spider-Man 3 did so much damage to the franchise's reputation that it was ultimately rebooted twice. Double time. Thanks. Number 4, Jaws the Revenge, the Jaws franchise. Following Steven Spielberg's game-changing blockbuster, the Jaws franchise progressively dug itself into a watery grave, with this fourth installment hitting rock bottom. Even the title is ridiculous. First time's the best for everything. After that, you know too much and nothing's ever quite the same. In the first film, it's stated that the shark does nothing but swim, eat, and make little sharks. In other words, sharks don't have the mental capacity to plot revenge. So how did this one pursue the Brody family all the way from Amity Island to the Bahamas? For that matter, why don't the Brodies just stay out of the water? Also, what's Michael Caine doing in this movie? We may never learn the answers to these questions, but it's obvious why this franchise never reached movie number 19. Number 3. Alien Resurrection – The Alien Franchise I heard you, like, ran into these things before. On the heels of two sci-fi masterpieces, Alien 3 left audiences everywhere with a sour taste in their mouths. Seeing how it killed off Ellen Ripley, though, at least there was no way Hollywood can milk another horrible sequel out of this exhausted franchise, right? Not only did the studio dig up Ripley for a fourth film nobody asked for, they further proved that any sequel with resurrection in the title is pretty much guaranteed to suck. Things have changed a great deal since your time. I doubt that. While you could argue that Alien 3 was the more unpleasant film to sit through, Alien Resurrection is especially infuriating for leaving one of the greatest action heroines of all time on such a lame note. The hell are you? Number 2. Batman and Robin – The Batman Franchise What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! We might be able to forgive Batman and Robin for its painful puns, scenery-chewing performances, and unapologetically cheesy nature if it were a standalone homage to the Adam West series. What really gets under our skin is that the film apparently takes place in the same universe as Tim Burton's Batman movies. Watching the caped crusader go from Michael Keaton's brooding, complex portrayal to George Clooney's tongue-in-cheek depiction is agonizing for anyone who grew up admiring this hero. Nice catch! You break it, you buy it. As grateful as we are that Christopher Nolan would eventually come along and restore Batman's good name, we'll never be able to get over the fact that this was the final film in the initial series. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. You didn't need to do this for me. Rudeness is epidemic, my lady. Yes. I think I swallowed a frog. I hope it wasn't an ancestor. That was fun. Who sent you? No one! No! We just wanted to see you! Liar! No one wants to see chap! Number 1. The Matrix Revolutions – The Matrix Franchise Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? Because I choose to. The Matrix opened a door of fascinating possibilities and felt like the beginning of Hollywood's next great franchise. The story lost significant momentum with The Matrix Reloaded, though, and The Matrix Revolutions made us wish the Wachowskis had just kept the original self-contained. Nothing interesting is learned about this world's mythology, major characters unceremoniously die, the action feels uninspired compared to its predecessors, and don't even get us started on that freaking sunset. Stacked up against some of the other sequels on this list, Revolutions may not be the absolute worst per se. As far as endings go, however, this is the most disappointing conclusion imaginable for a franchise that started off so strong. It was inevitable. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.